Mass Effect told the story of a universe teetering on destruction. But what if I told you it was only the beginning? Reaper, a label created by the Protheans to give voice to their destruction. In the end, what they chose to call us is irrelevant. We simply are. By retreating beyond the edges of the galaxy, they ensure no one will accidentally discover them. They keep their existence hidden until the Citadel relay is activated. Back home, say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? We impose order on the chaos of organic evolution. You exist because we allow it, and you will live because we demand it. I want to start by saying the synthesis finale is the correct choice at the end of the original Mass Effect trilogy, but it isn't the one we are going to get, and there's a reason for that. You see, the games on a wider scope told the story not of Commander Shepard and his team fighting against the Reapers to save the galaxy, but of the never-ending battle between organics and synthetics, between evolution and revolution. And the moral of the entire story, the culmination of hundreds of hours with this world and its characters, was that none of it even mattered. No matter what decisions you make, no matter who you save and let die, the ending is essentially the same. The clash between organics and synthetics cannot be stopped. As the Reaper threat rears its head in one final battle, you are given a choice. To control the Reapers, to destroy them, or to merge all organic and synthetic life in one final gambit to end the cycle. And this merge is the only viable option. I know it left people feeling hopeless, even after all the DLCs and extended cut editions, but contrary to popular belief, I think this ending actually ties together this central theme of artificial intelligence in Mass Effect quite well. And it puts an end to the biggest question in the series as to how organics and synthetics can coincide in a universe that destines them to always be in conflict. You either control or destroy the Reapers and set the Milky Way on a path to once again create its own destruction, or you break from the cycle and merge all intelligent life into a new consciousness, into a new being that can hopefully do it better. Well, at least until now. Because now that there is a new Mass Effect coming, one that carries on the story from the original trilogy, and one that carries on from an ending where Shepard destroys all synthetic life, it begs the question, where do we go next? In 2786 CE, 600 years after the full-scale Reaper invasion, and 600 years after Shepard's final choice to destroy the Reapers, along with all synthetic life, the galaxy began to rebuild. The Milky Way is now characterized by tribes of warring political and military factions that vie for power in different systems and planets, as well as control over newly constructed Mass Effect relays. The relays were repaired after the initial blast, after a century of study from prominent science teams and black channels, led by the shadow broker Liara Tassoni. By recovering the derelict and drifting Reaper ships that were destroyed in the Catalyst explosion from the third game, these teams were able to reverse engineer far advanced Reaper tech, which leads them being able to repair and improve upon the half-destroyed Mass Effect relays left in the Milky Way. These findings have also resulted in many technological breakthroughs, which early on in the game we will get to explore at places like the Citadel, the central hub of all species in the galaxy that has been maintained once again with advances in technology over centuries. But access to the tech is spark, and has resulted in larger technological gaps between groups, 
between those who have access to the technology and relays and those who don't. And it will lend the game to a ton of political intrigue and decision making as you traverse this new and dangerous Milky Way, opting to help some groups while destining others to their death. However, this will simply play as the backdrop to the larger story at hand, the one that will make this new series so great. In the now century since our last foray into the Mass Effect universe, Liara has studied the Reapers, just as she did with the Protheans for hundreds of years in the original game. And she has found that what we originally believed is not correct. In Mass Effect 3, we were told by the Leviathans, the apex organic race and original creators of the Reapers, that the Reapers were created to protect organic life. But that in their prime directive to do so, they turned against their creators and spawned the cycle from which the original trilogy is known so well. Where every 50,000 years, the Reapers come back to the Milky Way to harvest all highly advanced organic life to stop them from creating the true artificial intelligence that will inevitably destroy them. Galaxy gathering this data. There was no warning. No reason given when they turned against us. Only slaughter. Only the harvest. Tell me about the Reapers. Each harvest ends with the birth of a reaper, perfect in its design, each formed in Harbinger's image, our image. Or in other words, the reapers found the only way to protect organics was to protect them from themselves. But in the now vast amount of time spent researching and investigating reapers, organic civilization has discovered many new revelations. The biggest of which is that the Reapers were purging the galaxy every 50,000 years to protect us, but not from ourselves. The Leviathans were in fact wrong. The Reapers had turned against organics because they had found a bigger threat, one more pressing than the battle between organics and synthetics. But this threat is unclear. Discovering the Reaper's language and dialect and foreign synthetic communication has been troubling, even after all of these years. And while discoveries like this have been made, it's hard to make out exactly what they mean. Questions still loom like why did the Reapers not tell us? What threat did they perceive? And what other mysteries are at stake? The same kinds of questions we asked in the original trilogy that made it so great. And so the game begins here, with the galaxy brimming with political intrigue and infighting with multiple races from the original trilogy, as well as some new ones that have evolved in the hundreds of years to now join the other races on the Citadel, where we can explore and learn all of the backstory of the original trilogy and what has happened in between, with many great quests and side stories to be had, just like in the first Mass Effect. But the main story sets us off to learn more about this research Liara and others have done, to discover what the threat the Reapers saw was. And over the course of dozens of hours, we discover lost artifacts from ancient races, help settle disputes between factions, and learn the true conflicts of the galaxy. You see, in Mass Effect 2, there is a mission where we encounter a sun that is dying, much earlier than it should have. And in that moment, we learn about the presence of dark matter in the Mass Effect universe, something that isn't touched on very much later. Something we don't know much about at all, but has the potential to end all life as we know it. This was actually something that the original trilogy writers have already come out and said was considered. This idea of dark energy being a bigger threat but it was scrapped in Mass Effect 3's development and ending due to time constraints and the need for the trilogy to have a more thematic and all-encompassing ending. And I think it is the perfect way to continue the Mass Effect universe, while also keeping all the themes and races and intrigue that made the series so great in the first place. The ideas of synthetic versus organic, life versus death, and whether or not there's an afterlife can all be ideas that are once again explored and dissected in similar ways to the original trilogy. And at their helm will be a story that must bring a universe together, spanning multiple galaxies to fight against nature itself. So the story now turns to focusing on fighting what this dark matter is. And on this journey, using the newly constructed Mass Effect relays, we propel ourselves into the edges of the Milky Way, 
into the enchanted dark space, the same place where the Reapers hid during each of their hibernations between extinction events. And in this vast stretch of space, we find much more than we bargained for. As you first enter the edges of dark space, millions and millions of derelict Reapers can be seen, as well as the remains of their indoctrinated victims. You board one of the Reapers and manage to turn it on to talk to it in its dying breath. The Reaper reveals more truths of impending doom brought about from dark matter, as well as more reveals. The Reapers did not come in full force. Sovereigns claims in Mass Effect 1 that Reapers would darken the sky of every world didn't come true because only a small fraction of the Reaper Armada was sent to the Milky Way to deal with the cycle and to gain research into organic beings and how to join them with synthetics to create a new super race that could combat the dark matter. And that's exactly what the ending of Mass Effect 3 meant. When Shepard talks to the Star Child, it's because he's finally the one organic being that has the potential to merge, to sacrifice himself to merge all organic and synthetics. What Shepard learned while going into the Geth consciousness, or learning from Edie, or talking to various AIs, is what made him so special. Just as the Leviathan claimed, Shepard wasn't lucky. He was just simply the finale of all of the Reaper's research into creating a synthetic, organic hybrid. But in the final hour, he rejects this decision and instead opts to choose the Destroy ending which sets us on a path for these new Mass Effect games, which could have otherwise been avoided had the synthesis begun. And this destruction blast managed to also take out large portions of dark space as well, including the Reaper Central Command Hub, which is why they have been so irreversibly crippled. So you continue through dark space, discovering many lost and ancient races from previous Reaper extinction cycles in the Milky Way. And more interestingly, as well as many others from neighboring galaxies. The Reapers were doing their research on more than just the Milky Way. And this is where you find your first tie-ins with the Mass Effect Andromeda game. One I personally didn't like very much, however it did have an amazing idea for the Mass Effect universe. One where organic races had sent out arcs preemptively to protect themselves from the incoming Reaper invasion should the Milky Way be lost, sending these voyagers to the Andromeda galaxy nearby. You find the lost Quarian Ark that never made an appearance in Andromeda in dark space, and you make your way to Andromeda where the Arcs have now managed to populate large parts of the galaxy and have continued society into a future where they have been separated by those who first grew up in the Milky Way. Technology here is much different, and most notably, there is a big emphasis on AI research and development something that is strictly prohibited in the Milky Way due to the Catalyst event hundreds of years ago and the Reaper invasion teaching all of organic races about the perils of AI. But here the aliens of Andromeda have lost this knowledge and have progressed in new ways, which leads to conflict with the races in the Milky Way itself. And this is the story I think Mass Effect 4 should tell. One that shows you how the universe we grew to love has progressed all while creating a new and intriguing story with new and interesting aliens that can help us all fall in love with this universe just like we did decades ago. One that combines the lore of the original trilogy as well as Andromeda into one cohesive package that is then the springboard to unite millions against the threat of dark matter, something the game will progress and teach you about more as you go through the main missions. A threat whose history, intentions, and ire will be revealed throughout all future Mass Effect iterations as well, just as the Reapers were in the original trilogy. Along the way, we will find many squad mates and have many stories to be had, just like all Mass Effect games. But I think the reason that this truly is the perfect way to continue Mass Effect is because it takes the core of what made the original such an amazing sci-fi the weird and mysterious Lovecraftian creatures you could potentially discover in dark space. A universe with millions of years of history and rich lore to be discovered. 
the politics of each race butting heads with one another in a conflict between AI and warring factions over Mass Effect relays, and a story that beckons you to know more. And more than any other theories I've thought of in this past month, replaying the trilogy in the new remastered version, this is the only one that not only makes perfect sense for the world and lore, building off things that were introduced in previous games, but also continues the series on in the vein that it deserves to be, by elevating an already deep sci-fi world and giving it a story to rival the first. A world to discover, and things to learn, and a place that you can get lost in. You know, when I think back to why the Mass Effect trilogy is one of my favorite gaming trilogies of all time, and also my single favorite sci-fi universe ever, a lot of the reason is those moments. Those moments when you first discover the Rachni in Mass Effect 1, or you go on the suicide mission in the second game, or you cure the genophage in the third. It's these moments built upon mountains and mountains of lore and character building. And more than anything, that's what this new trilogy needs to capture. That sense that you're in a world that's bigger than yourself. That you're simply a character going through a galaxy that's unknown to you, with interesting and mysterious, crazy revelations to be had. And this setup for a new Mass Effect trilogy or a new set of games is perfect because it captures the exact essence that makes the series so great for me. Traveling around a variety of different planets and locations while learning about this super mysterious threat that we don't know much about. In a lot of ways, it's just doing exactly what the original trilogy did but with a new backstory and new enemies and antagonists to go against. The reason Andromeda wasn't as good as the original trilogy was because for all the things it improved upon, like combat and having bigger worlds to drive around in and explore, it got rid of what made the series so great. The world building, the lore, the story, and the characters. They were there, but they weren't as strong. And more than anything, this new Mass Effect series needs to have something that we can envision, like this dark matter theory. The idea of dark matter taking over the universe, going into dark space, discovering secrets from lost civilizations, and figuring out more about the universe is exactly what makes the original trilogy so great. And I hope more than anything that Bioware has learned that they need, should make this new series more like the original trilogy rather than Andromeda. And while there's many ways all of these games can improve, none of them are masterpieces by any means, they do capture something in all of us, and that's our imagination. More than anything, Mass Effect is great because it makes me feel like a kid again. Imagining all the different conflicts between these races. Imagining the undiscovered lands in the universe that I could potentially go and explore. And it's these ideas that need to be brought back. This imagination that can be wrought in all of us that play the games. And just like the original trilogy, I think a theory like this lends itself to making us have those experiences again. Thank you guys very much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. In fact, I'd love for you guys to come over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash gaming, and talk with me about this live. I actually have some more in-depth, specific theories about how this game could be constructed, and I'd love to talk with you guys about that there. I want this video to be a bigger overview and just general talk about the Mass Effect theories because it is one of my favorite of all time. And I'd also love if you guys could hit the subscribe button or like or share this with friends as it's always been difficult for me to really grow on YouTube, but I really do enjoy making videos like this. And you guys, especially those watching to the end and hearing me out, I really do appreciate that. I put a lot of work into these videos. So thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you next time.